Do you want to get good in Rise of Nations? Yeah. Then watch the full video. Okay. Also, before we get into the video, be sure to subscribe. Only 7% of you are subscribed, and it really helps out my channel if you do. Anyways, let's get right into it. So many of you have been asking in the comments for a guide, so today, I'm gonna go over the top 5 advanced tips and tricks that you can use in your Rise of Nations games to beat more players and win wars. Some of you may already know these tips, but hopefully, you learn something new, or you implement these tips in your games. So let's get to the first tip, preparing war. When you want to fight a player, especially one with a much larger country than you, the best strategy for declaring war is to declare war on one of their allies, preferably one who is AI. This is best as it gives an easy way to tap out and leave the war if you are losing, and there is nothing they can do about it. Like in this clip, where I declare war on Laos to get to China, so China's other allies like America and India don't get involved in the war, where I ended up winning the war and piecing out China. And you can also use this strategy to declare war on multiple people, by declaring war on someone with many allies which is especially useful for democracy players as you only need to justify against one player and the stability penalty for declaring war only applies to you once. Anyways, let's move on to the next and maybe the most useful tip in this video, flanking. In this game, flanking is simply defined as two separate divisions attacking one division. And to show you how overpowered flanking is in this game, here's a clip of me attacking 100,000 entrenched troops normally. The amount of casualties in this game is not always consistent, but here we saw France have around 40,000 troops left, which are also experienced now. So this is where flanking comes into play, because flanking an enemy gives you a 1.5 times attack bonus, which can sometimes be stronger than the defender's entrenchment bonus, allowing you to win battles you really shouldn't win. The first flank maneuver is the one you see in this clip, where I split my troops and attack the enemy from both sides. This is super effective and you can see that I win the battle with 20,000 troops remaining. The next flank maneuver is not even a flank, but this game is broken so it still sorta of counts as one. This flank maneuver just involves you splitting your troops and then sending them at the enemy. You can see that it's not as effective as the first flank, but it still does more damage than not splitting your troops. Keep in mind that flanking is not only a feature for troops, but also applies to every other unit in the game, like planes and ships. But especially for ships, like this flank I do to minimize losses from my destroyers and beat France's destroyers super easily and still have healthy ships. But there is also a way to counter a flank if it happens to you, and it's simply by splitting your defending troops so it's two units against two units, which negates the flank. Ignore the 100k troops over the 50k troops, that's just a visual bug from me splitting troops. But now, let's move on to the next tip, Naval Doctrines. Naval Doctrines are a really important part of winning wars, as having naval superiority can mean that you can easily take someone's capital or bombard their troops. The Submarine Warfare and Capital Fleet Doctrines are for sure the two most useful doctrines in the game, and they have each their own uses. Generally, Capital Fleet Doctrines is best in the early game as it reduces the cost of battleships from 75 million to 56 million and makes building them a lot faster. It is also good for carriers as it reduces the cost of making a carrier by 75 million. This doctrine is especially good in the early game as an early game battleship with a reduced cost can easily establish naval superiority and an early game carrier can easily win you any war. Moving on to the Submarine Doctrine, you can see how it's really good cost wise and that it literally halves the cost of making a sub from 30 million to 15 million and you can make them nearly twice as fast. It's also better in the late game since you will have more naval battles and submarines are much easier to spam than battleships because of the low upkeep and startup costs. And most importantly, the ships that counter subs, the destroyers, are usually the first thing to die in any naval battle, so having more subs than your opponent will give you a better chance at winning the battle. You can see in this clip where I lost a naval battle because it turns out that the USA had 20 subs and all my destroyers died at the start of the fight. Submarine Doctrine is also useful in the early game. If you are fighting a superpower with a better navy than you, then you can snipe the transports lagging behind. 
And just for reference, here's a list of military experience so you can better choose if you want your submarine or battleship to have a 50% attack or defense bonus from the doctrine you choose. Now to my next tip, which is to always expand, if you're not a democracy. Expansion is crucial in this game as it helps you stay viable in your server and annexing a country gives you a default $75 million which can easily help you fund your wars. My favorite place to expand though is West Africa since nobody goes there and you can easily annex the AI with no one to stop you. If you do this though, I also recommend that you jungle specialize your tanks with a speed boost in the jungle biome. Like in this clip where, even though I'm fighting Germany and France, I still take the time to send 2000 tanks down to Sierra Leone to be self-reliant on Titania and also annex its neighbors like Guinea and Liberia. This brings me to my last tip, stalling. More specifically, naval stalling, which is where you stop the enemy troops from landing in your country either by sending tanks at their transports, like I do to France here, or if you don't have any counters, simply send 10,000 clover troops at the transports to reset their landing timers. This is really good as it can give you enough time to build a destroyer or submarine to kill their transports while they are still trying to land. These are all the tips I have for you today, hopefully you learned something new, or start using these tips in your Rise of Nations games, because they will definitely improve your gameplay. Also, let's try to hit 200 likes on this video, and anyways, I'll see you in the next Smack That Game video.